Well, good morning. My name is Heather and I'm on staff here at The Village and we're just so glad that you're joining us for worship today. If you are new to The Village or wanting to connect with us further, please take a minute to fill out our connect card. We would love to get to know you a little bit better. Well, today is week two in our sermon series called Questions Jesus Asks Us. Today's question is, what is written in the law? We can listen to a lot of voices in life, but Jesus consistently points back to one source as the primary source for direction, scripture. And before we get into the sermon this morning, I want to invite us all to just set aside any distraction, any thoughts that might get in the way of us being present in this moment, and just be here together. So for us to do that, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us as we get started this morning. So will you pray with me? God, we're so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for this time in worship together. I pray for each and every one of us that we feel your presence this morning and that we boldly hear the message you want and so desperately need us to hear. God, be with us today and as we step out into the world to live into the message um, and to the call that you've placed on our lives. And for all of that, we are grateful for you. It's in your son's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen.
name is Carmen Brubaker. I'm the WASH Regional Manager for Water 4, and I'm also one of the directors for Access Water, which is Water 4's partner enterprise here in Zambia. My name is Chris Mongo. I'm administrator for Access Water. As Access Water, we, are, we have a great opportunity to get involved in the supply and distribution of uh, a safe drinking water to our rural communities in which you operate. For as long as people don't have access to clean and safe drinking water, they are prone to have to, to have problems such as uh, frequently falling sick, as well as uh, losing uh, uh, a lot of their precious time that they should spend for their school going children. Instead of focusing their, their time on school, they end up covering long distances to draw water. And for those who are involved in uh, other industrial activities such as farming and other, other things, they also waste their time uh, because they have to go spend it, uh, you know, uh, to go collecting water from long distances. So we are actually excited that we are part of the solution to the water crisis in our country. When we can bring safe, clean water close to communities right near their homes, then they're more likely to use that water um, for drinking. We're seeing the health benefits. The clinics are telling us that the uh, number of waterborne illness cases is drastically reducing. Um, it's also creating jobs for each of our systems. We need someone on the ground to do the daily operations. And so we have 30 attendants who are employed doing this work. Uh, we have four technicians on motorbikes who are able to go around and problem solve and uh, maintain and, and do some of the repairs, both for hand pumps and for pipe water systems. And we also have three drilling teams who are full-time employed, creating new water points for us so that we can um, continue to meet the demand in new communities and provide safe water to new communities. So when we can connect the schools and the clinics to safe water, then it's more likely that those nurses and teachers will stick around, which really improves the level of education as well as the access to healthcare for these communities. As a bonus to, uh, to the uh, supply of uh, clean and safe drinking water, we are also uh, giving the opportunity to the communities in which we operate to have access to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we, we, have, we have in place uh, a mechanism to reach out to the people by utilizing the very existing infrastructures that we have set up so that people can hear about God, they can hear about Jesus Christ. And when people come, come to the Lord, then they have, to, they, they have to be helped to stay and grow in their faith. So uh, uh, one effective way that we have uh, uh, established that we have come up with is uh, the creation of uh, Bible study groups that uh, uh, take care of these uh, new converts who, be who eventually become disciples. And uh, so far we've created uh, uh, 800, over 800 uh, Bible study groups, which are taking care of an upward of uh, 4,000 people. And uh, rest assured, uh, as we go into the future, the numbers will keep on growing until uh, Jesus Christ comes back. Amen. <laughs>
where Sean was one of my students, and now Sean is leading my own kids who are in my own family uh, as their youth minister. It's been really fun to see that along the way. Uh, so there will be a, a video podcast available of Sean's message this coming week, so I'd encourage you to go to our YouTube page or you can go to our website, check out our videos and our podcasts so you can see Sean's message that he's delivering uh, here at the Village uh, live today. It'll be recorded and you'll be able to see that next week. Uh, we're in week two of a series that we're calling Questions Jesus Asks Us. And I think a lot of times when we think about questions and we think about God, we think about the questions that we have for God. We think about the questions that we want to ask God. I said this last week, but a lot of us, I've heard a lot of people say, when I get to heaven, I've got a lot of questions for God. But the reality is, God's got a lot of questions for us. And if you read the Bible, if you read through the New Testament, I think somebody said there's something like 180 questions that Jesus is asked directly, and maybe he only answers three of them, but Jesus himself asks over 300 questions in the Gospels. Jesus has some questions for us. And when we, uh, when we listen to the questions that Jesus has for us, and when we try to dig in and try to, try to discover the answers, it actually strengthens our relationship with Jesus. Uh, it's like, why would Jesus ask us questions when he already knows everything? It's because questions invite conversation, and conversation leads to relationship. And Jesus wants a relationship with you and with me. And so last week, we looked at the question that Jesus asked his very first disciples, which was simply this, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Today, we're looking at a different question. Um, and, and the reality is, uh, there are a lot of voices that we can listen to in our lives. Um, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of voices, there are a lot of influences on us that will lead us in different directions. But Jesus continually and constantly points back to one primary source as the voice above all voices that we should try to listen to in our lives. It's the primary source, according to Jesus, this is the primary source of all knowledge and all wisdom and all direction. Uh, if you look throughout the centuries, every significant Christian leader throughout the last 2,000 years, almost, has pointed back to this same thing as the singular primary source. If you want to connect to God, if you want to learn more about God, if you want to grow in God, if you want wisdom in life, if you want to find healing, if you want to find joy, if you want to find fulfillment, there's one source that people have turned to over and over and over and over again. It's the Bible. It's Scripture. People have, uh, throughout the centuries, claimed that Scripture is the source of life. It's the source of wisdom. It's the source of knowledge. It's the source of joy. And Jesus points back to that. There's a story that happens in the Gospel of Luke. And uh, I'll just read it to you. This is Luke chapter 10. Let me turn there now. Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 25, it says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Right? He's asking, what must I do to have a full life? to have a long-lasting life, to have, etern to have a life that lasts beyond the life that I'm e experiencing right now. What do I have to do to have eternal life? And here's the question that Jesus asks. He says, what is written in the law? What is written in the law? How do you read it? In other words, what Jesus is asking is, what does Scripture say? What does Scripture say? The man answered Jesus, Scripture says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. Do this and you will live. I love this because what Jesus is saying is, is do this. Do the things that are written in Scripture Follow the teachings that are written in Scripture. Uh, listen to the instructions that are written in Scripture. Do these things, 
and you will live. It reminds me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, the, the Old Testament prophet Moses. The book of Deuteronomy is, is kind of like the last farewell speech. It's the farewell discourse of Moses that he gives to the people of Israel. And as he's wrapping up and as he's talking about the primary things, the most important things that they can do, he returns to the power of the law of God, the power that gives life to us. And here's what he says. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. He says, see, I set before you today life and prosperity on one hand or death and destruction on the other. It's a choice, Moses is saying, that you get to make life and prosperity or death and destruction. He says, for I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, his decrees and his laws. And if you do, then you will live and you'll increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. Right, the Bible from beginning to end, the primary, the primary leaders in the Bible from beginning to end, the most faithful people, the heroes of the faith, the people throughout the centuries who have been heroes of the faith, the most influential people the world has ever seen, the people who've been influential in my own life, who've poured life and faith into me. They've all had this one thing in common, right? Scripture has been so important to them. What does Scripture say? Jesus says, do this and you will live. Here's the thing about Scripture. If you want to do what Scripture says, you have to know what Scripture says, right? If you want to do what the Bible says, if you want to find the life that's found in the Bible and in the words of Scripture, according to Jesus, you have to actually know what it says, you have to read it, you have to interact with it, you have to study it. So that's my challenge for us today. And again, uh, Sean will be saying more about this in his message, and you'll be able to see that and access that. But here's my challenge today. The takeaway, I think, this week is to begin to spend more and more and more of your time reading the Bible. Maybe for you, a first step is, is simply to open it up to make a commitment to open it up every day for five minutes. We've got something that we send out every day called the Daily Bible. And it comes to your email inbox at five o'clock every morning. And it's just a simple scripture and thought for the day uh, that might help you stay focused and, and hear the voice of God. So if that's not a habit for you now, maybe that's the next step. And you can go to thevillagenashville.com slash daily Bible and sign up for that today. There's this free app that you can get on your phone. It's called the YouVersion Bible app. I've used it for years. And on the YouVersion Bible app, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different reading plans on all kinds of different topics. Maybe you're going through a hard time right now. You can search a topic that you're struggling with and you can find a reading plan on that Bible app. And maybe that would be helpful to you and be a source of life for you. And so again, the question, what does scripture say, right? If you wanna do what scripture says, if you wanna live into that in your life, you have to know what it says. And in order to know what it says, you have to interact with it. So that's my challenge for you this week. Again, don't miss what Sean has to say because he'll go more in depth about that. Uh, and you can, you can check that out on our podcast. Hey, I wanna pray for you. Uh, I wanna pray for you today. And uh, let, so yeah, let's pray, let's pray together. God, thank you so much. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you that you haven't abandoned us or left us alone. Thank you that you haven't just left us here to figure it out on our own. But God, thank you that you've given us your word. That you've inspired people throughout the centuries. And they've written down words out of their inspiration from, from you, words that can still guide us today and lead us today and give us life today. So God, I pray that this week you would help us to encounter you uh, through encountering scripture, through reading what it says and, and trying to put it into practice in our lives. So God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus, for the life that he offers. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, and you are good. If you'd like to support the ministries of the village by partnering with us financially, you can do so through text or online giving, and all that information can be found on the webpage, thevillagenashville.com slash give. Well, we hope that as you move through this week, that you'll be challenged to dig deeper into scripture and to see what God is saying to you through that. So I'd like to pray for us as we head out into the week ahead. So let's pray. 
God, again, we are so grateful for you and so grateful for your message and your words for us this morning. God, as we head out into the week, continue to be ever present with us and help us to see the path that you've laid out for us and give us the courage and the boldness to lean into the words that you are giving us and the message that you are giving us so that we can be all that you are calling us to be in our lives. We're grateful for you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.